Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, back with another video. So yeah, haven't been making videos lately, haven't done anything with this channel in a while. And I'd like to come up with an excuse for you guys, but if truth be told, I just haven't been bothered. I just can't be bothered um, doing anything with this channel because I don't give a crap about boxing anymore. Um, that's been the case for a long, long time now. And um, I haven't been following boxing at all. I haven't been paying attention to the news I haven't really been active on social media at all recently, you know. And, um, yeah, just, just to go on a quick tangent to let you guys know, I've had a few problems lately in my personal life. A couple of things that happened, you know, and, yeah, my health's not been too good, if truth be told. A couple of things that were completely out of my control happened, and, yeah, I'm in a little bit of a bad mood. I am recovering now. Things are getting back on track, but... I feel like it's a major setback, so yeah, I'm just, I'm in, um, I'm just in a bad mood, <laughs> I'm in a bad mood at the moment, and I just haven't got time to waste sitting here making videos talking about boxing, so yeah, I don't know how active I'm gonna be on the channel in the upcoming weeks and months, I don't know, but we'll see, but anyway, this, um, situation here caught my eye, and I wanted to talk about it, so, yeah, Alexander Usyk is going to be fighting Daniel Dubois. Now, there's been some speculation about this fight for a while, because, of course, Daniel Dubois, not too long ago, was able to pick up the WBA regular title against Trevor Bryan, who, on a side note, Trevor Bryan has to be one of the worst, if not the worst, fighters to ever win a title in any division. You know, he was an absolute no-hoper. The guy was literally... I, I, I would say he was probably the standard of your average white collar unlicensed boxer like like that that's literally this the st the level that i would um attribute to trevor bryan so it just goes to show you that in boxing it's not what you know it's who you know you know if you've got a guy like don king or frank warren backing you you could literally be some some average unlicensed fighter and you'll be able to gain a, a, a pretty good record on paper and maybe even pick up a world title. You know, it's pretty easily done. And, you know, that situation there, fighters of the level of Daniel Dubois and uh, Trevor Bryan becoming world champions really goes to show you the state of boxing. I mean, the <laughs> being... Being a boxing fan is, is it's pretty it's pretty embarrassing, if truth be told. But so yeah, I digress. What was I talking about? Daniel Dubois is gonna be fighting Usy. So yeah, I digress. What was I talking about? Daniel Dubois is gonna be fighting Usyk for the unified heavyweight title. The fight's gonna be taking place in Poland. Um I forget the date, I'm assuming it's coming up sometime within the next couple of months. But whatever, so how do I see the fight? Well, I see the fight the exact same way everybody sees the fight. I mean, I don't think there's a single person alive, even even somebody in Daniel Dubois' family probably knows how this fight's going to go. I would say that it's an egregious mismatch. And pretty much everybody that I've come across agrees 100%. This fight's an egregious mismatch. And really, with how much of a mismatch the fight is, it seems a bit unusual, doesn't it, that I'm choosing to make a video about it. Like, with how inactive I've been on here, and how little attention I've been paying to boxing, why do I feel compelled to make a video about this fight? Well, that'll become, you know, that'll become clear momentarily. So, yeah, j just quick breakdown of the fight. I mean, look, what attributes does Daniel Dubois have? I mean, Daniel Dubois is a big guy. He's, like, you know, six foot four or something like that. Big guy, maybe a bit taller. Um, he's got good power, there's no doubt about that, you know, he's a big muscular guy with decent power, and uh, th those are his attributes, but going into fight Alexander Usyk, if that's all he has, size and power, if those are his only attributes, well, Usyk in his last two fights just beat Anthony Joshua, who is bigger than Dubois, hits harder than Dubois, is more experienced than Dubois, both as an amateur and a professional, and is more proven at a higher level, okay, Anthony Joshua, say what you want about him, he's a flawed fighter, but Anthony Joshua was a world champion, a unified world champion, and a guy who had fought on a big stage many times and had been able to perform, so 
you know, I, I fail to see anything that Daniel Dubois brings to the table that Alexander Usyk hasn't already dealt with. I mean, I would go as far as to say that the likes of Chaz Witherspoon and Derek Chisora were on a similar level to Daniel Dubois, if not better. You know, let, let me just go off on a, on a quick tangent about Daniel Dubois, you know. To me, Daniel Dubois and the situation with him it sums up the absolute flipping state of boxing. Did I mention that earlier? So yeah, look, D- Daniel Dubois, you look at the way that he was brought up, and I was kind of a little bit fooled by Daniel Dubois. Like I never saw him as a great fighter or anything. I always saw him as kind of Frank Warren's discount Anthony Joshua knockoff. That was kind of how I saw Dubois. But I at least thought he had something. I at least thought he brought something to the table, at least at domestic level. I mean... He he seemed to be the goods, he seemed to have a lot of power, seemed to be fundamentally sound, and he seemed to be a guy who had certain athletic abilities. Then, of course, you know, when you really start to look at his resume and just the outcomes of some of these fights and, and the state that the opponents were in and whatnot, it's pretty clear that his fights were fixed. I mean, just... Look, I'm I'm sick to death of repeating myself about... um the legitimacy of the sport of boxing and how most fights nowadays are just flat out fixed. And I I think that even I've undersold that, if truth be told. I mean, I've been one of the people on here. In fact, I was one of the first people in the YTBC to really call out the sport for being staged most of the time. But I think it's actually a lot worse than I initially thought or was initially willing to admit because Daniel Dubois... That guy's entire resume is just built on bums taking dives for him. And it it was was reminiscent of Deontay Wilder's resume and the early part of uh, Mike Tyson's resume even. Shannon Briggs and guys like that. You know, guys... These guys are literally built on just divers. And, And then all of a sudden it gets to a point where the promoter seems to lose interest in them or seems to have bigger plans for them. And they end up throwing them to the wolves. And that's exactly what happened with Daniel Dubois. They stuck him in with Joe Joyce. And yeah, us on here who um, sort of gave that situation the benefit of the doubt and suspected, at least some of us did, that it was going to be a situation where you had two guys who were on a similar level who had been brought up, you know, at a similar speed and and both had been given real fights. Well, that wasn't the case. It turned out Daniel Dubois was a complete hype job. Um, most of his fights prior to that, if not all of them, were just clearly fixed. And he got completely thrown under the bus because when they put him in with that Joe Joyce fight, he got completely exposed. He got completely tore apart. And um, he had no idea what to do. He had no chin, no boxing fundamentals, no defense, no stamina. Power was overrated. He was relatively slow. And it was the first time he was ever in with an actual opponent who was hitting him in the face and trying to beat him. You know, it was reminiscent of, um, you know, Canelo when he fought Beevil. You know, it was the first time in years he'd had an opponent who was actually trying to hit him in the face. You know, (laughs) because that's how fake the sport of boxing is. You know, when Deontay Wilder fought Tyson Fury um, and, and he had that real shocked look on his face because he'd never been hit with a real punch in his entire career. You know, he'd had nothing but divers until that fight. Um, And you saw how he reacted. He was in complete shock. And it was the same situation with Daniel Dubois. And the thing with Daniel Dubois too, even the normies have started to catch on to what went on with him, because in his last fight, they almost made a big mistake. Um, Pretty much everybody was in agreement that that Kevin Lorena fight was clearly a fixed fight. Kevin Lorena accidentally knocked Daniel Dubois down three times in the first round. See, that's how crap Daniel Dubois is. A guy who was literally there to dive for him in the early rounds almost knocked him out in round one. And uh, the guy had to literally throw no punches and, and, and just line himself up perfectly to get stopped. And, um, yeah, look, I don't need to talk much about that fight. You guys already know it was an obvious fixed fight. So, yeah, going into fight Usyk, why did this fight catch my eye and why did I want to make a video about it? Well, it's interesting to me because the only way I can really read this situation, like, why are they putting Daniel Dubois in with Usyk? What do they stand to gain from it? You know, what does 
Daniel Dubois' handlers and, and the people running his career, what do they gain from this? Well, it seems to me that Frank Warren and whoever it is that's handling Dubois, they just have no confidence in the guy. And it's as if they figured out now, look, the jig's up. You know, the scam has been exposed. We can't protect this guy any longer. Um, boxing fans are simply not interested. So, um, yeah, he's got no chance of doing anything. So we might as well just use him as sort of a roadblock for the Usyk fight, you know, the, the Usyk Fury fight, because surely they must know that Usyk's going to win this fight. They must know that Usyk's going to win in a comprehensive, dominant fashion. And um, it's as if they just want a guy who is connected to them, you know, somebody that they have an option on, who they know isn't a threat to Usyk, so he doesn't jeopardize that Usyk Fury fight because I'm pretty sure that the Usyk versus Fury fight will happen. Um, whether or not it happens this year, I don't know, but I'm sure it'll happen at some point because it has to. You know, I'm pretty sure both guys are at a stage of their career now. I'm talking about Usyk and Fury here, where they're both looking for a cash out fight. You know, they they both want to retire. There's really no point in building anybody else to fight them. I mean, who else are they going to fight? Are they going to fight Wilder again? Who else is there that's going to be a, a legacy and career-defining fight other than each other? So I'm fairly confident that fight's going to happen. And I think Frank Warren and the people handling Dubois, who happen to be the same people handling Fury, at least I think that's the case, it seems to me like they just want it to be a smooth, you know, a, a, a smooth negotiation. They want to make sure that Usyk gets an easy title defense. They probably think that the likes of Zili Zhang or Philippe Hergovic are a little bit too dangerous for Usyk. You know, I'm not saying Usyk won't beat those guys. Obviously, he will, but but they probably think that those guys are a bit too dangerous. Like they might upset the party, if you know what I mean. And then Fury will have to fight one of them, you know, that that's a dangerous fight against, um, you know, an opponent who isn't going to bring anywhere near the kind of legacy and the kind of prestige as Usyk. So I, I think that they want the Usyk-Fury fight to happen. And it seems to me like they know that Daniel Dubois is an easy guy to put in there with Usyk that will satisfy the mandatory. It will get both guys paid. Uh, you know, it will be a sort of stay busy fight for Usyk so that he can keep his um, mandatory obligations, you know, keep himself active, keep the fight fresh in people's minds. And uh, I'm assuming Fury will have a tune-up fight as well, probably against a southpaw, like a, a Luis Ortiz or someone like that, you know, someone to try and prepare him for Usyk. And uh, they'll try and build the fight, they'll marinate it, and um, yeah, we'll probably get that fight either late this year or early next year. So yeah, that's pretty much how I see this situation. Um, does Daniel Dubois have any chance whatsoever in this fight? Well, no, because not only does he not have a chance in terms of the ability and the skill gap between them being too wide. I mean, Daniel Dubois just can't match Usyk for, for skill. He can't match him for athleticism. He can't match him for anything, really, except maybe power. And even that's questionable because Dubois hasn't really legitimately knocked anybody out, has he? Most of his opponents appear to have just taken dives against him. There's really nothing in terms of physical fighting ability that Dubois can do to win the fight. But even politically, the fight's going to be in Poland, which is... I mean, it might as well be in Ukraine, right? If, if they're going to be fighting in Poland, it's going to be a European crowd, you know, it's going to be full of people who are cheering for Usyk. And Daniel Dubois isn't even a big name in the UK, so... He's not going to have much traveling support, is he? So, um, And it's not even just about the crowd and the location. The people running the fight, it's going to be, I'm assuming, the promotional entity that Usyk has signed with. You know, he, he signed some sort of agreement with the Saudis and with the Zone and whatnot. And, and you know, I'm sure Matchroom has sort of a, a stake in what's going on with Usyk. So, you know, there's going to be a financial incentive for everybody involved for Usyk to win the fight, and that includes Frank Warren and the people that are promoting Dubois, because obviously they are, um, well, at least from what from from my perspective, I, I think they are pretty pretty obviously wanting to make that fight between Usyk and Fury, um, and I don't think they particularly care too much whether or not 
um, Fury wins the fight. Because, I, I mean, it's going to be Fury's last fight, isn't it? And it's going to be Usyk's last fight. Both guys are in their, their mid-30s now. and um, Or mid to late 30s in Usyk's case. I believe he's like 36 now. How old is Fury? What, like 34, 35, something like that? I don't know, but... He's getting on. He's he's getting on a bit now, and um, you know he's a guy who's talked about retiring for a while. So I think it's pretty obvious and pretty clear that they want to make that fight. So my 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 whole point is, even politically, Daniel Dubois isn't going to get any support here. You know, it's not going to be in the UK with British judges and a British referee. So there is literally no reason for anybody to even think that Dubois is in any way a threat to Usyk. He doesn't have anywhere near the kind of uh, pedigree that Anthony Joshua had. Anthony Joshua was taller, bigger, hits harder, probably faster, probably more talented, probably got a better chin. Um, and, and Usyk was able to convincingly beat AJ in both fights. That's assuming that they were real fights. I mean, I don't know, man. The, the whole the whole Ukraine war situation and, and how, how quickly that whole thing transpired after the first AJ fight has really got me wondering because boxing really is that corrupt and it really is that fake most of the time but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that they were real fights and uh, if that's the case Daniel Dubois brings nothing to the table that Usyk hasn't dealt with already um I, I I'm not even confident he would beat Chaz Witherspoon to be honest I mean man Trevor Bryan being world champion and <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel Dubois beating him for the title. I mean, what an embarrassment for boxing, hey? So yeah, this is going to be an embarrassing, egregious mismatch. Um, I actually think there's a good chance it might go the distance because Usyk might just want to get the rounds in and he might want to just use Dubois as a sparring partner. And, um, you know, just U Usyk tends to be a guy who's comfortable going 12 rounds and he doesn't seem to be too keen on forcing a knockout. And, you know, at heavyweight, Usyk's not going to have the same power that he had at cruiserweight. And he wasn't necessarily always a one-punch guy at cruiserweight, aside from when he fought Tony Bellew, who's, you know, a chinless bum, let's be honest. I hear he's coming back too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll talk about that some other time. But yeah, um, that's all i got to say. Um complete mismatch but for some reason I'm kind of looking forward to it I don't know why um yeah Usyk will probably dominate the fight and I, I think he probably wins every round near enough and wins on points um he, he could stop Daniel Dubois if he wants to but again like I said Usyk might want to get the rounds in and just use him for sparring so yeah um if you want to call this a prediction video I'm, ju I'm just gonna say Usyk in a dominant performance probably on points so yeah let me know what you guys think. Uh, thanks for watching. God bless.